guys today I'm going to talk about opto sensors this is an opto sensor this is what a lot of people use for the Arduinos but opto sensors quite important in model railways for various reasons and it's usually some form of train detection you might use it for automation you can get blocks that will take the opto sensors that are linking with the automation software which will tell the software where your train is you might want to use a light on your panel and that tells you that there's a train in the siding you also might just want to use it as a switch so when it goes past the various points in your layout it activates something it could be for instance on Swade's Pond if I put an opto sensor in the engine shed once a loco goes in it could fire up my welding circuit take the train out and the welding will stop it could be for various reasons that we might use an opto sensor there's various commercial products that use them the mega points control system uses them Heathcote uses them to trigger off the signals and things like that block signaling again they have been known to use opto sensors as well and again that's for triggering off things like signals and stuff like that but this is what we're going to look at now what's triggered this video is a few weeks ago great channel naive gauge I'll put a link if I can I'll put a card up above on this video and I'll also put a link below as well now he's investigated these opto sensors he investigated this type as well because he's doing some train automation and he has got a block detection system that he's going to use with current detection along with opto detection from what I can gather the more sensors you have in the track the more accurate your software is and the trains will more likely to stop in the right place so this is what we're going to look at this is an opto sensor and what I've done is I've got a little board here this is a bridge rectifier and I've got it going to a 5 volt regulator and that gives me my 5 volt voltage on this little sensor now why have I not this little circuit up well the most common voltages as model railway users use is simply 12 volts DC or 16 volts AC and these are simply because when you get a model railway you get a DC controller these are the usual outputs we have on the controller so as modelers we're quite happy with 16 volts AC voltage and 12 volts DC voltage now DC is another game but we're not going to go down that route just yet so I like to play with 16 volts AC or 12 volts DC now with a bridge rectifier if I put 12 volts DC through that it'll come back out with 12 volts DC for argument's sake might come out with a little bit less but I'm not going to go into all the jiggery pokery of the electronics and the same if I put 16 volts AC through that that'll convert that to 16 volts DC regulator at the end changes my voltage to a set voltage now this is a 5 volt regulator you can get 12 volt regulators and this just gives me a clean voltage to this sensor now then on this sensor what we've got we've got three pins going in there's three pins here you've got your ground or your negative 5 volts plus and a data out in fact I'll write that on it call that data out really what that's doing is when it's not activated the data out will actually be 5 volts when the system is activated it drops low that's all it does it drops low and other systems can pick that voltage drop and that will trigger what's going on I mean you could make an Arduino project quite simply and use this to activate various things on your layout now then you've got two things here for argument's sake, I'm going to call this is an infrared LED on this side. And for argument's sake, it's a photo transistor, I know, but I'm just going to call it an infrared receiver. I've 
done that on this diagram so that when I come to test it I know which way my wires go and this bit here is a little potentiometer and this just actually alters the sensitivity of the range of the system so what I'm going to do now is we'll plug you in and I'll show you what's happening so those lights on there just tell me those bits are working as you can see I've got two lights now that is because I've got a lamp overhead and it's interfering one thing I would like to point out guys is on this the infrared LED will show up on a camera but to a naked eye it's invisible makes it a little bit awkward for testing but if you want to know it works point a camera at it you'll see a light and I'll show you what I mean we'll turn this light off if I point that up now there you go you can see the infrared LED working now then you'll notice there's one LED on there if I put my hand in there it reflects the light back job done that's detected if I put a white piece of card again white reflects the light back nice and simple this is just a black box that I use for my decoder system if I put that in front no lights take that away put the white card in and it detects so that's what we're dealing with today I'm actually looking at the sensors at the end now these are five millimeter sensors watch Naive's video he's covered all this and I'm basically just following the footsteps that he's led because in all honesty I was discussing this with him and I says to him have you tried anything else with it have you tried fiber optics and he says no how would I do that so I thought right let's knock a video up let's see if it works it may not even work guys but I'm just trying to make these sensors smaller on the track system so that we can hide it easier this works for all different gauges I mean you know me I'm primarily engage but it might be nice for you to blow guys as well so let's have a look let's see what we've got first so first of all engage piece of track and you can see I've put two holes in it it doesn't look very good it looks a bit scruffy but we'll plug that in so there's my sensor that's in what I've done here I've got a little truck and I've stuck a white label underneath I've not even painted it guys but you look here if I put the truck on the track funny angle to put the truck on I know put it over it reflects back just like that okay so we know that's activating but these are five millimeter now what they've done is put three millimeter ones in and to be honest it looks a lot better in engage it fits a little bit better between the sleepers might not be so hard to hide but I'm going to mock up a few ideas I've got and we're going to see if they work and I'm going to ballast it as well guys so we can get a proper idea what it's going to look like when it's ballast as well so my first idea have a look at that shall we guys right guys we're back my first idea is fiber optics now then this is one millimeter comes in meter lengths essentially this is a light guide I often use it on locos for headlights and you you put that through your body and probably put an LED behind it and it shines a light through it so what's my idea well I made a little block it's just three millimeter MDF just the normal stuff like that and I've made three layers the first two layers I've got five millimeter holes in them 
and the top layer has got a one millimeter hole in it. The idea is I'm going to feed my fiber optic through there and hopefully it'll just be a one millimeter end. Done that twice, one for the LED, one for the receiver. In fact, if you look through there, you can see I've got holes in the bottom there. This is just a standard 5mm LED. Push that in, it just pushes in. Should be able to get a wire in there and it should light up. So I'm going to crack on with that. We're going to put some fibre optic through there, glue it in, and we're going to try and mount it in my track. And we'll see what it looks like, guys. So that's the first idea. So I'll crack on with that now see how we go so as you can see guys I've put my fibre optic cable through so it's just a case of pulling it down getting it level I'm going to glue it underneath then we'll get it into this block and we'll glue it in there as well so I'll get that done and we'll come back right guys for test purposes I've done exactly what my have done I've put some pins on the end there I know for my little plan which way around my wires go so I know that's me infrared and that's my photo transistor what I'm calling a receiver just for argument's sake put them on some leads job done so we'll get this wired up I will just make sure it works first before we go any further Right, so I've just wired up these leads to the sensor and we'll make sure it works. Look at that. Get me white cardboard. And we know those sensors are working. So that's good. So when we come back, we'll have a look at what I've done with my fibre optic wire. Alright guys, so I've got my fibre optics into the block now, as you can see, and it's just there. Right, we'll make sure it works. I'm just going to plug in my LED tester with a bright light. So if I put that underneath into, say, that hole there, you see the light shining through put it on the other side so there we go we know it shines light through it question is will it work right then we're plugged in we know the sensors work so let's plug them into my little fiber optic block let's see if it works and no. Try me chuck on it. I am getting no feedback at all. Okay. Right then. I have got one more idea first. Let's make sure it still works. Yeah, it is still working. Right, so my idea is I will paint that black. Uh, just in case there's any light bleed on there and we'll come back and we'll see if it works with that alright guys as you can see I have painted the fibre optics now so it's all black so let's get it all connected and we shall see if it actually works so we've got it connected you can actually see the UV light shining through or the infrared light I should say and it doesn't work so that was a failure but I have got another idea guys so I will come back and show you what my idea is so here's my idea guys as you know these sensors are 5mm, we can get them in 3mm. I found them in an SMD format. These are 805s.
So they're roughly 2mm by 1.5mm. So I'm going to crack on, get these wired up, and we'll see if this works, guys. Right, guys, these are the infrared LEDs that I've got. Very, very tiny, as you can see. And I'm going to work on the theory that the green dot is the negative. So I'm going to crack on, get these wired up now. Right guys, these are the infrared receivers. Again, they've got a little tiny mark on them, green. So again, I will use that as a negative. So I'll crack on and get these soldered up now. Right guys, I've got the SMDs in the middle of the track there, just to show you, very very tiny, so we'll plug it in and see if it works. So there you go guys, you can see the infrared bulb lighting, my circuit's got one light on at the minute, if I put my little truck over it, look at that, two lights, Oops, I'm wobbling a bit there. But as you can see, it detects it. So there you go. We can actually use very, very tiny LEDs to make this circuit work. So that's a bit of a breakthrough. Okay, it might not be quite as tidy as my original method. But as we know, the fibre optics just didn't work. So, this was my next plan. So what am I going to do next? I'm going to get this ballasted up and we'll take a look guys and see what it looks like ballasted. And we'll look at the original configuration to the new configuration. And we'll go from there guys. Right guys, so this is the original sensor in the track, we'll just run it over, as you can see, that's working fine. Right then guys, so this is the tiny sensor working now, look at that. There you go, that works. Right guys, I've decided to have a little bit of fun and I've made a working AWS. An AWS in railway terms, it actually tells the signalman when the train goes over it, exactly where the train is. I thought, why not let's just do it in model form. So that's what I've done. It's only a rough thing, can be refined. Let's see if she works first, shall we guys? So I've got my truck on. 
we'll go over and look at that so that shows a working AWS now my thoughts on this this would actually make a very nice project for somebody somebody that can do some 3D printing um, put the holes at the end it's nice some square holes made exactly for the 805 packages that way you would just push them in through the bottom you wouldn't need to paint them because the surrounds would actually act as an actual break for the lights in engage they look really fantastic even better in double O guys these could be commercially made no doubt the only problem is it's wiring the LEDs but there again all these commercial guys they can wire up LEDs no problem so this could actually work so idea for any manufacturers out there or hobbyists that have got a 3d printer you could actually make a 3d printed AWS I think people will be interested in these guys but this is just a proof of concept this is just me having a bit of a mess about showing the system in action so there you go guys it's a working AWS something different I know but there you go guys so there you go that's my journey on this on these opto sensors I hope you've enjoyed it you know what to do guys if you like the content thumbs up subscribe and all that sort of fun fun stuff that we all do so I'm gonna leave it there guys and I'll catch you later on Bye for now.